Hey guys, Rob here from City Tonight Productions. Hope you're having a good day. Wanted to take a quick moment to do a short video or hopefully short video on the Icon Qcon Pro X system. Now I've had this system for roughly two years, never had a problem with it until recently within the last uh, three, four days. First of all, big shout out to uh, Steve at Icon Support who got back to me within uh, less than 24 hours of submitting a ticket with all kinds of things to try. Thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate that. Same with Nadir from the um, Icon Support Group on Facebook. You're excellent and I really appreciate your help. I know the Icon website is a little vague in information as I found myself. I am in no way a techie. I had to do some trial and error to figure out what was happening with my system. So the first thing I did was I tried to install new firmware. I thought maybe there was a firmware upgrade that I needed to update to. When I did that, I ended up frying this board, or at least thought I fried this board. All I had was a blue screen, there was nothing else, and it wouldn't recover. I think I got up to step five in IMAP version 2.33. On step five, it was updating, and then it said upgrade firmware error, and the board went blank, and I couldn't recover it at all. Now, without this board, the other two extenders don't work. So basically, this entire system was a paperweight. So what I had to do was take an older Mac computer, which was actually either an M1 or lower, an Intel-based Mac, to upgrade the firmware. Because I have a Mac Studio with the M1 Pro Max, first thing I did to solve the problem, took an old Mac and I was able to recover my firmware on here. Otherwise, if that didn't work, I would have had to ship this unit back to Icon for them to put firmware back onto it at my cost. I wasn't really happy about that. So I wanted to make sure, do everything I possibly could to get this thing to work. So on the M1 Mac Mini and the firmware upgrade, still wouldn't take within four or five tries. I would get up to step number five, it would still firmware upgrade error. I couldn't get anything back on this board. So then I got frustrated. I ended up thinking, you know what? I'll put an old version on. I can't even remember what version it was in IMAP. I found a version in there. I tried putting that on, it wouldn't take it either. I kept trying. I said, you know what? I'm gonna put the new firmware back on. I'll try it again. And lo and behold, it worked. Got my system back up and running. Didn't have to ship it. Didn't have to pay for it. It's always a good thing when you're in the music business, right? Okay, so that's firmware upgrade. That's done. Problem one solved. Moving on to problem two having the three boards be installed back into Logic because they weren't working with Logic again. Now I should preface this with, I'm on Logic 10.7.4, uh, which is the latest version of Logic. My issues here may not be your issues if you're not on Logic, if you're on Cubase or if you're on uh, Pro Tools or, or whatever you're on. But this is happening in Logic for me. The Logic was not reading the board. So I had to reinstall them under control surfaces, under preference and I had to do each unit separately. So just by chance, after a lot of trial and error here, I happened to notice that my two boards that were working kept freezing. And I know there was a, uh, somebody on the Icon uh, support page mentioning that his boards were freezing and he was very frustrated with that. And now I'm noticing mine freezing. So it got me thinking, maybe there's a connectivity issue here. Maybe it's logic. Maybe it's the Mac Studio. Maybe it's the USB port that's on the Mac Studio. I tried everything. I went through cords. It wasn't cords. I went through the Mac. I tried a different USB hub. Finally, out of a lot of trial and error, I decided to just unplug the unit while it was running, plug it back in, and boom, the board came back up and running. Intermittently playing for 10, 20, 30 seconds, bang, freezes again, won't move. You can't move faders, you can't do anything no control over logic. So I did it again. I unplugged from the back of the Mac Studio, plugged it back in, and lo and behold, it runs again. So now I know there's an issue connecting to the Mac Studio. So I tried connecting it to the other USB port on the Mac Studio. Same results, always freezing. So I finally decided I have a Thunderbolt dock that has a USB 3.0 port on it. It's a powered dock from OWC. I use it with my M1 Mac Mini. So I thought, you know, I'll just give that a try. It's my last resort. I don't know what else to do. I'm thinking this is a software issue. And I know the website says you should not be plugging into any kind of a dock. 
but it's the only thing that works now. So the board's up and running, back. Here's the Mac Studio. This right here is the OWC Thunderbolt 4 dock. All three units are plugged in together, all into the one cable of the USB, which used to be into the back of the computer, but for some reason doesn't work anymore. It keeps freezing. So I'm using uh, this here and then into the computer through this Thunderbolt 4 and everything is working. I'm not 100% happy with that. I would like to be able to not have to use uh, an expensive dock and tie up another one of my Thunderbolt 4 ports. And so I'm hoping that uh, there's either a software upgrade, firmware upgrade, maybe Logic needs to upgrade or Mac Monterey. One of them is the problem, not sure what it is, uh, but hopefully we get that sorted soon. All right, so we'll do a test. So as the song is playing here, you can see I have it hooked up. Everything's working. I am now going to unplug this. And I'm going to plug it to the back USB port. Insert joke here. Can't fit it in. There we go. Now, there you go. Board just died. Oh, it's trying. So that's all three QCONs put into the USB port of the back of the Mac Studio. And it's, it's trying to read. You can see it's trying. You'll see some lights come on, faders won't move, none of this, nothing moves. But yet, I can now unplug this, watch the board, the board is dead. We'll now plug this in to the dock, and boom, board comes alive and stays alive. But for whatever reason, again, I'm not a techie, but that OWC Thunderbolt dock has done wonders and it's keeping everything running as you can see. No errors, it's not freezing on me. I've let it run for eight hours straight, nothing, no problems at all. So I'm hoping that uh, that will help anybody out there who uh, is on Logic and is having trouble with the boards. Um, firmware upgrades, I find them a little scary now. Now I will say, I hope that Icon, the website gets cleaned up a little bit uh, tech support wise. Um, there's so much information on there and it's very confusing. I think there's improvements that could be made to that, that tech page. I guess what I would like to see on a, on a tech support page would be more so of you know, asking you questions. You know, what type of computer do you have? Apple or Windows? What operating system are you on? Uh, what units do you have? What DAW are you using? And as you answer those questions, it branches off into possible issues and possible fixes. I think that would go a long way uh, just to help somebody out here because I know how frustrating this can be. And when your baby that you spent a lot of money on goes down, uh, it's not fun. It's not a good feeling. It's a, it's a pit in your stomach that uh, won't go away. And I'm just happy that I was able to bring this thing back to life. If it's the M1 Max chip maybe, because I know there's an issue with firmware upgrades. You can't use the IMAP with anything higher than an M1 chip. Take note of that. That should be in big bold letters all over that icon website and it's not. So I'm hoping that uh, support will put that on there as well. Anyway, cheers guys, take care.